So phone a friend, which is supposed to be you ask an expert, right? Is right only about 65% of the time. Do two wrongs make a right? The surprising answer, Shrikant, mm -hmm. is that if you average together enough wrong answers, you actually get a pretty good correct answer. That is actually true. Yeah. And we, we tested it out. Yeah. So this is a concept called uh, the wisdom of the crowds. And let me start with an example that uh, we did just now. Okay. Yeah. Like literally a few minutes ago. Yeah. So we wanted to check if anybody knows the distance from Pune to Paris. Yeah. Okay. So we went around asking in the office, what is the distance between Pune and Paris? Like as the crow flies. Unless... You are a weirdo. This is not a distance you are going to know. And thankfully, this office does not have any weirdos. We asked 10 people and we got all kinds of answers. Hold on. This office has weirdos, but different kinds of weirdos. Okay. So, uh, I mean, at the low end, we got one 4,700, one 5,000. Yeah. Uh, there was a 50,000 also, but let's... That's an outlier. Out of 10... We got rid of two outliers, like, huh. you know, like really weird outliers can mess up things. So you get rid of outliers. So two outliers we got rid of. The remaining hmm. range from 4,700 to 13,000. Hmm. Okay. Which is well within the circumference of the earth. Right. So 13,000 is somewhere on the earth. And then I took an average, actually the geometric mean of all these numbers. Okay. And it came out to be 7264. 7264 kilometers was the average guess. Geometric mean guess of what is the distance between Pune and Paris. And the actual answer is 7121. The 7264, 7121. That is 100% error only. Okay. So, nobody knows the correct answer. In fact, most people know like a ridiculously wrong answer. And yet, the average is just 2% off. Okay. Yeah. Before doing this experiment, I had no idea if this is going to work or not. I just did it because I believed I have heard so much about this concept. This is the first time I'm trying it out. And even I am surprised by the result. Okay. Yeah. 2% 2 is pretty close for an error margin. It is mind blowing how close it is. For something that people really don't know. Yeah. Who would want, who would actually keep the number of Pune to Paris in their head? If you are one of them, comment. Yeah. So, um, this concept uh, was discovered in uh, 1908, right? Okay. Uh, Sir Francis Galton, a statistician, uh, he had gone to a country fair hmm. and there, there was a contest. Okay. There was a big dead ox hung there and you have to guess the weight of the ox just by looking at it. Okay. Whoever comes closest is going to win a prize. Right? Yeah. Typical contest. Yeah. Yeah. 800 people participated. Sir Francis Galton took down all 800 answers hmm. and then he took an average of that. In this case, he took a median hmm. and by the way, not a single person got the weight correct. Okay? Of course. But the median weight was within 1% of the exact answer. Hmm. In fact, you might also want to try this Pune to Paris experiment that we did with your friend circle or in your class or in your office. Go ask about 10-15 people. And you'll find the same thing that Sir Francis Galton found with the ox. Uh, people might not individually know the distance between Pune to Paris, but together, geometric mean of their answers, after discarding the outliers, it will come really, really close. This finding has been replicated all over the world in many different contexts, right? Mm. Not contests, many different Context. situations. Mm. Um, okay. The idea is that if you take enough guesses from different people, mm -hmm. all of them are wrong, but they are wrong in different ways and their errors cancel out, right? Because <laughs> two wrongs do make a right. Well, not two wrongs, you need around 10 wrongs to for it to cancel out. That doesn't mean you can go around doing wrong things and saying all of my wrongs cancel each other out. That's not how it works. Please don't do that. That's how, that's how it works. Democracy is pretty much a whole bunch of wrong things. Yeah, but people. not one person doing 10 different wrong things. It is 10 different people doing 10 different wrong things. Yes. One person doing 10 different wrong things ends you in jail. Yeah, don't forget that. And then don't come back to us saying, Are, but you said wisdom of the crowds. It is wisdom of the crowds, not one. And the wisdom of the crowd still works, right? I mean, if you are in jail, uh, nine people are not in jail, the average person is still not in jail. So that's <laughs> good. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this, man. Oh. So this, this actually works 
in surprising places okay like what like so uh, when the challenger space shuttle blew up ha uh, right within minutes okay the stock price of four companies which had uh, components in the shuttle correct their stock prices crashed oh okay? um by the end of the day ha huh. right three of them had recovered back they were just 3% down from their high ha huh. the fourth one had not recovered oh okay. it was down significantly okay this is fourth a, one was a company it's... called morton theocol okay okay Six months later, huh. when the presidential commission, the committee which did like a fact-finding mission to see what was the real problem, and it's a famous one. Yeah, you might remember the O-ring that Feynman talked about. Yeah, you should actually look it up if you don't know about the O-ring, O-ring and the Challenger. Primary blame went to Morton Theocon. Oh, so it's that same day before any investigation had happened. the crowds had pretty much figured out that morton theocal is going to get most of the blame hmm. right this know. this gives me a little more uh, belief little more trust in the stock market because uh, absolutely yeah. right i mean just every... a little more not too much because the stock market has its own other shenanigans and manipulations I and what not no right the thing is that a stock market it goes every day for thousands of companies right yeah. once in a while something weird happens stocks get manipulated once in a while there is a bubble yeah but on most days for most companies hmm. for most of history stock market does an excellent job of guessing the correct value for a company hmm. and this takes into account everything how they are going to do in the future right hmm. as in in uh, the early 2000s Amazon had a stock price which just made no sense. All experts were saying this is ridiculous, right? Why does a bookseller have such a huge uh, market capitalization? Hmm. Look at the world today. I mean, in those days, the wisdom of the crowd said that this is going to be a big company, right? Hmm. Most of the time, it works. It's just that our world is just looks at when it doesn't work. That's when it. there's big news headlines most of the days when it is working there are no headlines that oh stock market did a good job of finding the correct prices of stocks <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd like to see that headline if you know what i mean but yeah. true that makes sense that makes sense uh but okay the stock market yes hmm. challenger shuttle yes hmm. but there are not many occasions in life or in whatever where we go around asking crowds questions like not yeah. everybody is going to have a ready made crowd in front of them right so when you do have a crowd make the most of it right so for example you end up on kon banega karodpati who wants to be a millionaire ask the audience <laughs> right i mean that's why it's a life that makes sense that right? is why it's a lifeline in fact an analysis ha huh. shows so phone a friend which is supposed to be you ask an expert right is right only about 65% of the time whereas ask the audience is right about 91% of the time wow that's wisdom of the crowds wow that that puts the whole kon banega karodpati uh, utility of helpline scale in my head on a very different level yes because i was i always thought that uh, if you don't know the answer to something uh, it is always better to ask the expert to yeah. ask a friend to look it up and what not depends huh. on the kind of question sometimes an expert huh. is the right person to ask the question but there are sometimes especially when the question is vague and fuzzy and all of that uh, wisdom of the crowds can be much better yeah 91% is a great strike yeah. rate to be very very honest yeah. but then uh, okay what if i don't have an audience at all what if i'm thinking only about myself and only for myself what if so, a single person thinking about whatever funnily enough huh? uh, there has been research on this it's called the crowd within okay you are not one shrikant you are many shrikants that is true so the way not you, that i have dissociative identity disorder but i am many shrikants i contain so, multitudes uh, the way this can be used will give two ways that have actually been researched right you are serious yes i thought wow so if i ask you huh. right uh, what is the uh, distance from pune to paris in our experiment you had it said 8000 right correct if i had told you that you know that's the wrong answer can you come up with a better answer i would have actually gone lower correct In fact, there is research showing that when you say this to people hmm. and they come up with a second answer, of course, both answers are wrong, <laughs> but the average is better than either answer usually, right? Uh, a different way of doing the same thing is that you give an answer, hmm. then use a different method to come up with a different answer, 
and then average them. A third method is that you come up with an answer today, try to forget everything about it. Three weeks later, try to ask yourself the same question and come up with an answer. And again, research shows that average of the two answers is better than just this one answer. Right? That's so, what he meant when he said you are multiple speakers. Like I, within technical term, this is a technical term. It's called the crowd within and people do research on the crowd within. You will find lots of articles on the web about the crowd within. Anybody doing research about the crowd within, you have multitudes of Shrikants available yes. for research. Right. I can give you a crowd within for your research. Let me know. Ah, fascinating. Yeah. But then, uh, can I use wisdom of the crowds for everything in life? Not really. Okay. What, uh, what are the examples I, where I so, can't? I mean, usually when the answer is numerical, hmm. Right? Then averaging out the answer gives you a good answer. Right? But many questions in life are not numerical. Right? After finishing, after graduating, should I do an MBA or should I go for a job? It's not a numerical question. So wisdom of the crowds isn't really going to help there. Huh, because I was also thinking there is another saying that yeah. says, listen to the people and then do what your mind tells you. Yeah. So that is when it's not a numerical thing right cool. another uh, place where wisdom of the crowds doesn't work hmm. is that you know there has to be an actual answer hmm. Hmm. then the crowds are all spread out around the actual answer if there is a question which is like about the future hmm. or something like that then wisdom of the crowds doesn't work you just get a random answer because everyone is just randomly guessing and since i'm assuming this is based on statistical sampling the rules of statistics apply which is basically that the crowd has to be of all kinds like yeah yeah of course this is a very important point right if all of them come from the same background and they are all making the same kind of error hmm. the wisdom of the crowds isn't going to work right because if they will all, have their own inherent biases biases right if all of them have been influenced by the same baba right then all of them are going to have a wrong answer in a certain direction i wonder so, which baba has an opinion on pune to paris <laughs> but i get your point yeah. go on <laughs> so uh, what you want is the crowd to be diverse right in fact this is also a reason i mean more generally that in companies having teams that are more diverse have been shown again and again and again to have much better performance this is one of the contributory reasons for that right mm -hmm. diversity is good mm -hmm. and that explains why a lot of companies are now insisting on the entire dei thing diversity quality and inclusion in yes. their in their workplaces yes you know, I'm actually wondering what happens uh, now that we have this entire influencer culture where people on social media are telling you what to think and what to feel, what stock to buy. Uh, that's that's what... a problem, right? Because influencers are influencing people in certain directions and that is reducing the diversity of the opinions in the crowd and making the wisdom of the crowds less uh, useful. We are not influencers, huh? we are not influencing your opinion, we are only telling you what to think. Or at least get influenced by 10 different influencers. Yeah. Diverse. <laughs> get influenced by 10 different influencers. If you want names of those 10 influencers, we'll tell them to you. Tell us which kind of influencers you want in the comments. <laughs> but for now. No, wait. There is one more important. Yes, there is one more important thing that wisdom of the crowds works if the answers are coming independently. Ah. Okay. Because if you tell me an answer, and Akash hears the answer. Huh. That is going to influence Akash. Can you tell me why? Oh, we've done an episode on this. We've done an episode Group on this. Conformance. We are hardwired to sort of, you know, conform to what the group is saying. So if all the group is saying an answers of a certain type, you will, without realizing it, unconsciously shift your answer towards the group. And then the answer will be biased. So for wisdom of the crowds to work, you have to get the answers independently sort of uh, in secret right mm. by the way that's plantwati 2 not plantwati 1 plantwati 1 was different this is plantwati 2 mm -hmm. this is shrikan that's naveen thank you this is future iq